Welcome to day number 25. And uh, Peter, it's kind of hard to believe, but we have now ended up, and we're going to add one day, we're going to do a wrap up day. But it's pretty amazing to think that much like with Paul's letters, we have now in 25 days looked at all of John's writings. And we end up again at an extremely short letter, an extremely short piece of communication that uh, John is writing to his dear friend Gaius. So I'm going to read the first eight verses. You'll read the last. We're actually going to read this entire letter, and then we'll chat about it briefly. And so it says, The elder to my dear friend Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. It gave me great joy when some believers came and testified about your faithfulness to the truth, telling how you continue to walk in it. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Dear friend, you are faithful in what you are doing for the brothers and sisters, even though they are strangers to you. They have told the church about your love. Please send them on their way in a manner that honors God. It was for the sake of the name that they went out, receiving no help from the pagans. We ought, therefore, to show hospitality to such people so that we may work together for the truth. I have written something to the church, but Diotrephes, who likes to put himself first, <laughs> does not acknowledge our authority. So if I come, I will bring up what he is doing, talking wicked nonsense about us. And not content with that, he refuses to welcome the brothers and also stops those who want to and puts them out of the church. Beloved, do not imitate evil, but imitate good. Whoever does good is from God. Whoever does evil has not seen God. Demetrius has received a good testimony from everyone. And from the truth itself, we also add our testimony and know that your testimony is true. I had much to write to you, but I would rather not write with pen and ink. I hope to see you soon, and we will talk face to face. Peace be to you. The friends greet you. Greet the friends, each by name. So as we jump into this, um, one thing that has to be obvious to us, because Paul writes it in 2 John and now in 3 John, that he wants to write more, but he's, he'd rather see them face to face, yeah. and he's planning on visiting them. And I don't know why, but both times we've read this, or read Paul referencing that. Oh, John. I, or John, sorry. Yeah. I've got Paul in my brain. No, don't yeah. we all, yeah. Yeah. So that John's writing this is that here we are in the midst of COVID. And as a pastor, when we were unable to meet at all, I can't tell you how much I longed, not just to meet with people, but to see the people of City Church meeting together. Mm -hmm. And it, I don't know why, but I really get John's heart in a new way now to where he's saying, look, I don't want to have to Zoom you, <laughs> right? right? I don't want to text you. I don't want to email you. I would rather see you face to face. That's really our, Christianity's built on that face to face relationship. And we can't, when we can't have that, I don't know. It just, it, it's just at a different level yeah. that I wasn't a huge fan of. We do it because we're called, but man, am I a fan of getting back together again. Well, John's letters, I mean, the last two are moving pretty aggressively mm -hmm. into the realm of like very messy relationships. But very personal ones yeah. too. Yeah, so Super personal. it's that place where what we believe strongly and how we relate to one another mm -hmm. are in this pot together and they're getting all stirred around. And so I think one right. of the reasons he says this is sort of like, I'm not sure I can manage this from a thousand miles away. Mm -hmm. You know, he says like, well, I have more to say, but I'd rather <laughs> right, not right, say right. it here, you yeah. know? Um, and I think that's one of the really challenging thing about these, because there's parts of these letters that sound really harsh to us in some way. Yep. and. I think all of us could imagine situations in which a harshness of this kind, we'd be like, okay, that's not crazy. Right. But we don't know that situation. We know we've got this Diotrephes. Right. Who thinks that he's a big deal. Who Notice what it says that he puts himself first. He likes first. to put himself first. That's my goodness. Especially, you know, having tracked some through the Older Testament where we learned about the importance of humility. One of the benchmarks of love and humility is you yeah. put other people first, right? So... For whatever reason, Paul is, man, he's taking this guy's knees out. Yeah, so, I mean, I once 
preached on what John has to say about Diotrephes in this little church that a friend of mine is the pastor of. And, right. You know, this funny idea about um, it's oftentimes people who put themselves first, like you can't be in community. Hmm. There's always this temptation to be the person that fights your own battles, that puts yourself first. Hmm. But you start ending up being the kind of person no one, no one can talk to. Wow, interesting. Like, he can't submit to John's authority, maybe because if he submits to somebody else's authority, maybe he thinks that like people won't like me anymore. I mean, uh, there's yeah, yeah, that yeah. kind of cycle. And we don't know what the interplay right. is here. We don't know. But John has John has told us in First John that you know perfect love drives out all fear, mm. and John seems to be holding up this Diotrephes figure as somebody who's in the church mm-hmm. that seems to have escaped the the love that John has talked about in the other letters. Okay. So he doesn't seem to do a great job living in community. He turns away the brothers mm-hmm. who come mm-hmm. to the church, which between telling the elect lady not to host these preachers right. and hearing that Diotrephes won't let other people host some right, other... Right, right, right. It gives us the sense that who puts up who for a couple nights maybe means something more indifferent than it means... Hmm in our own yeah, culture. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, so, like, whatever that's about. But the sense is that Diotrephes <clears throat> is not moving in the posture of love in the community that fulfills mm-hmm. the commands of Jesus, that allows us to be in fellowship together in the light. Mm-hmm. You know, he's kind of breaking that apart. And we don't really know why. We don't. We just kind of know that it's happening. Right. But what's interesting to notice, though, is that you've got one example of someone in that church that... Uh, John says, I'll deal with it more, right? But then he elevates someone else. He elevates Demetrius. And it's almost like he's saying, okay, there's these two people you're aware of. I'm going to show you the one that you need to emulate or move towards. Or if you're going to pattern yourself after someone, then look at this person and move away from that person. But I, I've often thought about the eternality of the word of God. And here this guy is listed as someone that Paul's like, you put yourself first. I mean, that's like in the eternal record of God. Yeah. You're just like, man. And then this other guy is lifted up as, hey, this is the type of person you want to be like. Yeah. You know? Now, I could be wrong about this. Mm -hmm. But these all sound like really Greek and Roman names. So Gaius, for instance, I think is a Latin name. Oh, it's not Jewish. And Demetrios and Diotrephes. You can hear the Greek in there. So, you know, we wonder is, is John writing to Greek named Jews? Is John writing to to Gentile converts? Right, right. Who are we listening to here? And it all gets more interesting, and I also don't have any answer for this, in which he says, well, he accepted, in verse 7, he accepted nothing from, my translation says, the Gentiles. Mine says the pagans. But the actual word is ethnikon, um, Hmm. which is the word that the Old Testament uses to refer to Mm non-Jews. And so I wonder, is he, does he mean non-Jews, the Gentiles, or does he mean people outside the church? I don't know. Yeah, it's... But this Jew-Gentile thing that is treated in one way in Paul is mm-hmm. being treated here sort of more subtly and frankly more confusing. Okay. Well, one of the things that I think is really great is the very last two sentences. And it says this, Peace to you. The friends here send their greetings. Greet the friends there by name. What we can sense in John is his passion for people, his love of relationships that are based on Christ. Um, He goes on to say, greet these friends by name. In other words, don't miss one of them. Go to each one of them and tell them we miss them and that we love them. And you can really see at the end of of 3 John, that koinonia coming together where Christ is calling people to walk together. Well, that's it for our time together. So Peter, would you close us out in prayer? Let us pray. Uh, Lord Jesus, we ask, Um, for the sort of humility that comes from you, the humility that comes from having been loved by God. Whoever doesn't love hasn't seen you. So we ask that we would see you and we would love people, that we can entrust ourselves to you so that we can live our lives without the need to put ourselves first. We ask for the gift of communities of love 
and communities of faith where the truth about you gets told. We ask for peace in those communities and uh, love in those relationships. So we trust you for all of these things. Yes. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Well, God bless you. And we actually are going to be starting a brand new devotional series tomorrow. Day after. The day, oh, that's right, our wrap-up. So what we'll do is we'll be very specific tomorrow about what that series is going to be, how to sign up for it. We'll have all of that available for you. The usual, exactly. So that's it. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow for our wrap-up of the writings of John.